Support for Radio Friends comes from OsteoStrong. Improvements in bone density, strength, and power can be achieved by weekly five-minute no-sweat sessions on their four-spectrum machines. These isometric robotic machines safely emulate high-impact loading on different parts of the skeletal system, which stimulates activity in bone-building cells. Balance and agility can be improved by two-minute sessions on vibration plates. Every session is supervised by a trained coach. Learn more on Facebook or call to set up a complimentary wellness assessment and session. Good morning. Welcome to Radio Friends on Thursday, June the 17th. My friend uh, Gary Wonder is with us. And Gary, of course, is with the National Federation of the Blind. Uh, Gary has been blind since birth. And we were talking before we went on. So, Gary, welcome to Radio Friends, by the way. Thank you. Glad to be here. You have no idea what anything looks like. That's right. I have no visual image. You have no idea what this room looks like, what your house looks like. You have no idea what a sunrise or a sunset looks like. That's right. But you told me, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you told me, you enjoy sunrises and sunsets. I do. Uh, I think maybe for different reasons than you do. Uh, for instance, for me, a sunrise is, the, you know, the first bird chirps and then a second. And then pretty soon you've got this singing and then you feel this nice heat on your face or on the back of your head. And it's just wonderful. It's a new day. It's, it's, it's a new uh, time for creation and uh, another opportunity to do something right Uh, or maybe to forget about yesterday when you did something that wasn't quite so good it's a new day and the sunset is kind of that same thing where you go from this really hot beaming sun that you really wish you could tone down and it sort of turns it tones itself down and you start to hear the crickets and the night creatures and it's all very enjoyable and you you painted a picture for me in my mind as to what perhaps you are imagining that is happening. Yeah, I suppose that's right. I mean, I don't see the crickets, but they're self-evident by the noise that they make. Uh, the mosquitoes I don't see, but they manage to score right. anyway. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah. Now, you were talking about also rehabilitation. And every blind person goes through rehabilitation, whether they were blind from birth or blind later in life. What did you mean by that? Well, people can go blind uh, anytime uh, during their life. Of course, if if you were to go blind uh, today, you would need to learn um, different skills that you now use sight for. So how do I read? How do I write myself notes? How do I take down a phone number? Uh, How do I make a grocery list? How do I make a to-do list? How do I uh, do um, my grocery shopping? All of those things are relatively easy for you. Whether you like to do them or not, you have the skills right now to do them. Go take it for granted. Exactly, you take them for granted. But when you lose vision... What do people want to do? Well, they want to give you information about how to function without vision. And you realize that one of the things that you miss is the ability to take down how you're going to start learning. And so we have, a, we have places that we send people uh, to go to rehabilitation centers where you learn a lot of these things. There are some people who can't go to centers, and so we have some folks who go to houses. Now, you don't get the same kind of intense rehabilitation experience if someone comes to your house for an hour or two a week that you do if you go to a rehabilitation center and you spend several months there, but you learn all of these skills. Um, One of the first things that I would suggest to people who go blind is if you need a way to quickly read and write is get yourself a digital pocket recorder. They're an efficient way to take things down. It's not always an efficient way to retrieve things. But at least until you can start learning Braille, uh, it's a way to do things. Is Braille very difficult to learn? No. It seems mysterious to people because a lot of folks don't know it. But it's actually, I think, 
in terms of shape recognition much easier than print. And f people who learn it at six years old find that they learn Braille as well as six-year-olds learn print. Is, is Braille, you have the ABC, you have the alphabet in Braille? Absolutely. The alphabet, numbers, punctuation signs, um, and, uh, you know, a lot of the characters that didn't used to be important that are very important today, like the at sign. I don't think before email I ever knew that there was an at an sign. An at sign, right. Yeah. That, well, I was going to ask you, are, are all of the words, when you're reading Braille, are the words all spelled out, or are there different symbols for different words? Good question. There is a Braille shorthand. It's usually called grade two Braille. And what that means is for commonly repeated words, we will have a sign in Braille. So the word F-O-R is used all the time. Uh, the word B-U-T is used all the time. Uh, what are the list of coordinating conjunctions for and nor but, or, yet, and so. All of those have uh, some kind of short form representation in Braille. And part of that is because since Braille has to be felt with the hands, the hands don't have the same discernment as the eyes, so Braille has to be bigger. Well, if Braille has to be bigger, that means it takes more paper, and it usually takes thicker paper. So the, the shorter we can make the book in terms of Braille, the better off we are. Now, I've seen Braille on elevators where uh, the, it, it, the floors are in Braille. Mm -hmm. uh, what about names of buildings and doctor's offices? Are those in Braille also for some people? Uh, for some people. Some people will put them out there. The trouble with a Braille sign is that you have to know it's there to find it. The great thing about a print sign is that you move your head around and you and look you and it. you take in the signs and then you get the information that they have to offer. So Braille is limited in that way because it doesn't shout out, here I am, take a look at me, figure out what I am. I didn't think about it that yeah. way. So if you're looking for a restroom, yes, it's very nice to do men and women and, and to know which one you're about to enter. But when you have to go to the restroom, you sure wish it shouted out where they were. Yeah, here I am. Here I am. <laughs> That's right. See, those, those are things that That's we, right. we, we don't think about that you have to deal with, but you deal with very well. Yeah. It's a little bit of pre-planning. It means that if, you're, if your bathroom scale is 1 to 10 about how bad you have to go, you don't wait to 9.5 to start looking. <laughs> and, if, and you can always ask somebody, too. Hopefully someone's there. Exactly. Gary, we're, we're out of time. Thank you for uh, shedding light on all of this and informing me along with our audience. Well, your people, questions were so good, I'll have to come back with rehab again. Please come back. <laughs> uh, if people want more information, uh, how do they get in touch with you? They can call 874-1774, that's area code 573, or they can do nfbmo.org. Okay, National Federation of the Blind. Gary Wonder, you're always a pleasure to have you. It's great to be here. Thank okay. you. We're out of time. Bye-bye.